Hi everyone and welcome to my channel. Today we're going to make a tiny Beetlejuice suit for my two-year-old son. For those of you who've been following with me on my Instagram for a while, you know that I love sewing for kids. I think I've made around seven Elsas at this point and about three Annas. I have made a bunch over the years and I did make Malcolm a Sherlock Holmes costume as well as a little embroidered court suit. But from the age of one to two, he absolutely refused to even try on a costume. So I had to give up sewing for him for a while because I couldn't even get a fitting in more over an actual costume on him. However, since he's turned two and a half, he has become more vocal and I realized I could bribe him. For instance, all these incredible photos taken of him wearing his Victorian sailor outfit, I fed him Japanese gummies in between each shot to make that happen. Once I realized he was bribable, I decided to go for it and try making him a costume. Granted, bribing him all the while for all the fittings. I thought about what I wanted to make him and I settled on a Beetlejuice costume. It was either that or a David S. Pumpkin suit with my husband and I dressed up as the side dancers, obviously. However, you guys may know that I am absolutely obsessed with Tim Burton as well as black and white stripes. And no kidding aside, I was massively obsessed with Beetlejuice as a kid. I watched the animated version as well as the live action version more times than Disney princess movies to the point where my parents got a little concerned. That kind of pushed me towards the Beetlejuice 100% because my husband wanted the David S. Pumpkins. I wanted Beetlejuice, but you know what, how it is. Now, before I get into making this suit, I want to take a moment to thank today's sponsor, Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning platform that has thousands of classes that you can take in so many different topics as varied from learning how to cook Indian food to learning calligraphy in a new and interesting font to how to write your own novel. I've already learned so much from Skillshare, including how to use Adobe After Effects and a green screen, which is how I always put myself into different movies at the end of the Get Ready With Me's. Right now I'm taking a class called Happy House Plants, Caring For Your Plants, Learn With The Sill by Chris Satch, a botanist who also goes by The Sill. It's really nice learning how to take care of all the plants around my house better because I am tired of having a house full of wilting yellow plants that take about three years to die that I don't throw out because of guilt. This class was only 27 minutes of my life long and it was really nice to just sit and watch while I sewed. But that's the beauty of Skillshare. All the classes are broken down into smaller chunks, 10 minutes or less, so that I can learn in bite-sized pieces that are never too overwhelming for my busy day. The first 1,000 of my subscribers to click the link in my description will get a one month free trial of Skillshare so you can start exploring your creativity today. Thank you so much Skillshare. Now let's get back to making this suit. Now picking the pattern was incredibly easy. I found the perfect pattern by Simplicity. The fun thing about this is that there are two versions of this suit. One for toddlers numbered 8764 and a matching one for grown-ups numbered 8528. So if you say you want to make one for your son and one for your husband, you are all set. So of course I bought both. Finding the fabric for this was difficult though. I noticed that Malcolm has a tendency to sweat a lot, a gene that he gets from my husband, and polyester tends to trap that heat in. And whenever I put it in polyester, he's really uncomfortable and he sweats like the Dickens. So I was ideally looking for a 100% cotton with a black and white striped print. After some math and some designing, I decided I, that I wanted his stripes to be exactly one inch wide. There are plenty of one inch wide black and white striped fabrics, but sadly they were all polyester. I did find this poly cotton blend for $5 a yard, and so I bought three yards of it for the suit, since you know that's all it really takes for a kid's suit. I got it and I really hated the texture. It was really hard and really not very soft, and I already knew that Malcolm would not put on something like that, because he tends to go for things that are softer and refuses to put on crisp things. So at this point, I gave up and decided to draw my own fabric. Looking at the actual Beetlejuice suit in the movie, it looks like a printed fabric to me rather than a woven or drawn one like the Sleepy Hollow dress that I made last year. You know what? If I was able to make the Sleepy Hollow dress with markers and I had some markers left on my shelf, I could definitely make a tiny one for my son. So I went ahead and measured my son, which cost me two gummies. <laughs> FYI, this suit comes out large. I would say that the pattern adds about two to three inches on top of the extra inch leeway I gave my son's measurements. So feel free to measure exactly and not add your own leeway or even perhaps go slightly smaller or do more fittings, which I didn't do. But meanwhile, I had this fantastic 100% herringbone weave in my stash. I washed it and tumble dried it to soften it more and gave it a good steam iron. Afterwards, I put the pieces onto the fabric, traced it, and marked out where I wanted the stripes to go. Just a tip 
tip on pattern matching, remember it's not matching the edge of the fabric to the edge of the fabric. It's matching the edge of the fabric minus the seam allowance. So for places where I really cared about pattern matching, what I did is I measured out the 5 8 inch seam allowance and drew that line in with a ruler and some heat disappearing friction pen. I then drew out where I wanted the stripes to go and the major points that I cared about here were the back where I knew I wanted a white stripe to be in the very center back and as well for the front of the suit where I knew I wanted a white stripe at the very front edge because that's what it looked like in the original movie costume. I traced where I wanted the stripes to go, I got some Arteza markers and started filling it in. For those of you who remember my Sleepy Hollow dress, I actually tested around seven different types of fabric mark markers, sharpies, extra strength sharpies, and even dry erase markers. I tested everything. And I realized that Arteza was my personal favorite since one, it dried quickly, two, it doesn't smudge that much, three, it doesn't have toxic fumes like Sharpies, and most importantly, it bled the least. Luckily, they saw them by the six pack, and I went through something like 64 of them for my Sleepy Hollow dress last year, so I, I think I had about 12 left in the house. I ended up using eight of them for this outfit. After I finished drawing and filling in all the striped pieces, I then cut out the fabric piece and I ironed it, one, so that I would smooth out the marker lines, and also so that the heat would set the ink. Now this is on the back of the instructions of the Arteza marker and while I have not tested this out by dipping it in water, this makes sense to me since this is how almost all fabric markers work. You have to heat set them with heat. So be sure to put it on high heat and iron that out. While the fabric is fairly strong, I want to flatline this. So I got some cotton muslin and cut out the same pieces and then flatlined each piece with a 3 8 inch seam around all the edges. Once that was done, I pulled out the simplicity instructions and started following them. So initially, the first couple of steps basically makes a whole shell of the front first. I sewed the back together, including following all the instructions to make the vent. most part, I found the instructions for this pattern to be fantastic. But um, I actually did stray a little. I wanted to add a little bit more stabilizing to the two front panels and to add a little bit more support to the color. So I got some iron on horsehair interfacing, mine is from Pelon, and cut out the pattern of the color area. 
I then remove the seam allowance and then iron this onto the cotton muslin. Please note that this is only onto the cotton muslin. I then got some silk thread and patch stitched the fold line and that goes through all the layers by the way. I didn't think that the whole of the collar needed patch stitching since this is such a tiny collar, but just patch stitching the fold line twice and pulling the thread just so that it would want to fold at that line naturally made it just shape so much nicer. And you'll notice that it keeps the shape even without me touching it. After this, I made and sewed on the back of the collar. Then I drew the facing to the suit front, which includes the lapels. I made a note to make those diagonal, just like the movie version. And I think that this is the most important part of the suit. People look at the lapels the most. So I made sure to make these stripes extra neat. I cut out and pinned it onto the front collar and then down the front. I stitched it with a 5 8 inch seam allowance, clipped the corners and turned it inside out, making sure that all visible edges were nice and neat with some more ironing. I folded over the bottom edge and hemmed everything by hand, being sure to sew the edge of the fold into just the muslin. I also made the sleeves and hand striped that. You'll notice that this time the stripes are going horizontally to follow the stripes on the original movie suit. I really love that horizontal sleeve. I flatlined the sleeve pieces and sewed it together. I added the sleeves onto the suit next. I then spent two gummies having Malcolm try on the jacket so I could figure out the length of the sleeve. The pattern suggests buttons, but I know from history that getting him to let me button things is hard. I use very large snaps and sew some black buttons onto the outside to hide my stitching and also reflect the movie costume. And the jacket was done! For the pants, I really just followed the pattern instructions step by step for at least the insertion of the fly. This mostly consisted of drawing in the stripes, cutting out the pattern, flatlining the pants with muslin, and then I did the stay stitching as suggested and sewed the pants together to the marked point. Then I made the fly portion and sewed that onto the very front of the left side of the pants and ironed that open. I then added in the zipper to the fly portion as the instructions told me to. I also added the zipper to the other side. This is pretty exciting to me since I've never made zippers flies before and I, it really did work. I cut off the excess zipper after sewing some stitching at the top to keep the pull in place. I then added the portion to the back of the zipper to cover up that area and make the pants more comfortable for Malcolm to wear. Honestly, currently he's in diapers so I don't know that it'll really he really needs it. Yeah, but I like the idea of it and so I did it. Now this is where it strayed from the directions a little. It gets a little wonky here. I just made my life easier. I sewed the back of the pants together, ironed that open and sewed it to the front of the pants along the sides, the inner legs and the crotch. And then I ironed it open and flipped it inside out. Really much easier than what they had, but you know, whatever works for them. I then added in the waistband. The original pattern had three separate pieces to cut out, but that seemed like a lot of work. So I just cut out two long rectangles, 2.5 inches wide and like really, really long, and sewed it to the top of the pants and then cut off the excess. I sewed one to the top and then sewed another one down so that there were two of them and folded it down. Afterwards, I ironed all the seam allowances and whip stitched the band in place.
I did have Malcolm try this on at this point, which cost me actually four gummies, and realized that the pants are about three to four inches too wide. Wow, like that was a lot. They were also around three inches too long and that was easy to hem, but how to fix the width? So I added in two cotton ties at the back and a little bar in the middle. That way you can tie the back closed as you need to and the bar kind of keeps the bow in place so it's a little bit more comfortable for Malcolm. Then I got some fabric markers and extended the black stripes up to the top of the waistband to finish off these pants. I also colored in part of the waistband tie so they wouldn't be a complete eyesore. And I was actually honestly really happy with how this came out. It was so satisfying. I then added a snap to the very front of the pants and the suit was done. I can't even tell you how satisfying it is to sew a child's costume. Making a like kid's costume is not like half the work. It's like, I would say it's like a quarter of the work of a full grown grown up costume. So that was pretty amazing. And it's still just, you know, it comes out so dang cute. I love it. It's so satisfying. This is, this is why I love sewing for kids. Anyways, guys, I am so sorry. I was going to do a whole get ready with me and I was gonna dress up as Lydia in this dress and Malcolm was gonna be Beetlejuice. But even after bribing him with a new Lego set to try it on, he hates it. I don't have any videos. So these are the couple of photos I got and I'm sorry that he's crying, but you know. Behold, a super anticlimactic video. You know, it's not his fault. It's my fault. Also, I did ask him what he wanted to be for Halloween and he he actually didn't give me an answer. I do love this Beetlejuice suit though, so, and I really like how it fits. So, you know, I, I may still make my husband one. I'm sure he'll put it on for a while. In any case, thanks very much for joining me. Please come back in two weeks for another Halloween video. Now, I just wanna show off this outfit because I am really like happy with it. This black dress is by, by Vixen by Michelin Pitt. It's the Frenchie dress. And I actually picked it up because um, Rachel Maxey did, did like a bunch of different Halloween characters last year. And she did Lydia for one of them and she picked this dress and I was like, that is such a perfect Lydia dress. So anyways, I got it so I could wear it as my Lydia costume and um, didn't work. But like that's just, that's just kids guys. Like if you have kids and you, you can't be disappointed that they don't love what you made for them. Like you just can't. I am a little disappointed. I am a little disappointed, but um, it's okay. Hi everyone, Editing Steen here. I kind of just like made this jacket. I was like, okay, he hates it. I'm just gonna put it away. Emotionally, I, physically it was still on the table because I'm lazy. And my husband mentioned that, you know, our son really likes bees. Like it's, they're his favorite animal. Why not just dye it yellow? What did I have to lose? He already hated the jacket. So I got some Dritz yellow dye and I dyed it and I basically get three gallons of water, half a bottle of the dye, one cup of salt and some detergent and you just kind of mix it around. And I dyed it in there for about 40 minutes and then threw it in the wash and washer and dryer, ironed it and now it was bright yellow. And you know, I know it's really stupid, but it's like made the world of difference. Now he absolutely loves it. Um, he'll actually be like, put on bee jacket, put on bee jacket. I don't have any videos, but here are some shots of him wearing it, looking actually happy. I guess that's what it'll be now. It's the Beetlejuice jacket, you know? So, buzz. he likes it now. So yeah, that's my video. Thanks for watching guys. That's the real ending.